But I know he had a great time at the Players' Championship last year. Said he wants to play in it again. You can actually see he's wearing the Players' Championship hoodie right now that he obtained thanks to playing the Players' Championship last year. And this should be this should be fun. Excuse me. Number seven versus number 22 here on the Season 2 leaderboard. Yeah, and you see Eric Hawkins on the other side playing. We talked about the Obzon Company deck. Definitely a deck in his style. The kind of kind of player who's into two-for-ones, not so much like straight control, but you know, the deck where you, you value in two-for-one people to death. Well, Logan and Eric will begin things here in just a moment. Do appreciate having you guys. Cedric Phillips, Matthias Hunt, Ken Crocker on the sideboard. We are here from Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. A check on this matchup will be how much removal Eric has. He has four Obzon Charms and three Dromoka's commands at his disposal. And actually two Hidden Dragon Slayer, which really could matter in this matchup. It actually can matter a lot. You don't see that card play a huge role in standard at all. But the 2-1 Lifelinker could actually be pretty good here. Mai's going to sacrifice a Windswept Teeth. I believe Mai's on six cards for this game. Yep. We'll get a Plains. Now, the interesting thing about Ban Heroic is it has good mana, but at the same time it has bad mana. It's very strange in that fashion of you have one island and one forest. You've got these eight fetch lands to help a treasure cruise, but your mana is kind of being pulled in a couple different directions. Uh, it's very sensitive, even though you do have good fixing or good-ish fixing. We saw Tom Ross debut this deck, make the top eight with it. Ross Merriam winning with this deck at the Open Series in Cleveland a couple of weeks ago. It's very powerful and lies off to a great start. He's five and one. Yeah. Engineer, Bant Heroic, a deck that has been around for a while. Um, this these, I'm interested by the Abzon Company decks because these Green White Company decks are relatively new. Yeah. We haven't seen, you know, I, I don't know if really the metagame has adapted to the deck. You know, first of all, is it, is it, does it have staying power? Is it still going to be around? If it is around, you know, what are its good matchups? What are its bad matchups? I think a lot of those questions are still open. Here for Rose to play. Might as well pass the turn back. So Hawkins knows what he's up against right away. If he's familiar with the format, this is a Banner Heroic deck. This is a Fleece main line. It's going to be a painful one for Eric. He'll deploy that and pass the turn back. Might as well draw. Can be tricky here. A lot of plays for Logan will put the Hero Varroas out of range of Fleece main line. Yep. Got a couple copies of Defiant Strike here. He's going to start with Jamoka's command. That's big. Yep. That's a counter and a fight, which means a target. So it's going to be a 4-4 into the red zone. Hawkins will draw. Copy of Den Protector. And he is positioned to take a lot of damage here. He had to decide between a turn two Fleece Main Lion and a turn three Death Mist Raptor. He went with the Lion and really got punished by Logan's play there. I think he is debating if he wants to just throw out a Den Protector or another creature as a Chump Blocker to gain life. It's not unreasonable, actually. Especially if he believes that the game will end before he has a chance to cast them all. He's going to take one right now. Yeah, that's just a Chump Blocker. Okay. He's just going to hard cast a Den Protector and pass the turn back. Not the intended use of that card, but... It might just be a chump blocker, as you did mention, or deal a fast of the draw there for Logan. Yeah, well, I think it's a pretty heads-up play on his side. If you recognize that, hey, I, my life total is going to go down quickly, you know, this, this did gain him three life. Mm -hmm. There's a Seeker of the Way and a passing of the turn. Den Protector the draw yet again here, but now Hawkins has three mana, so he can cast a card like Death Mist Raptor. Also has access to Obzon Charm now, too. Yeah, he would take two off the Obzon Charm, but perhaps that's enough. It might be ideal to get that heroic creature off the table. Yeah, the cool, the, the good part about Death Mist Raptor is that it's unlikely that on this, up this board that Logan can get through Dent and Protect, or sorry, Death Mist Raptor without losing one of his creatures. There aren't many tricks that the Band Heroic deck has that can do that. Hawkins is going to take, it looks like two. There's Death Mist Raptor. Yeah, just take one. Good on a 12 draw card. Yeah, I like the line because if he sets up a trade here and Death Mist gets in the graveyard, then the fa that second Den Protector he has since drawn could some at some point down the line get him get him ahead. The single island is a pretty nice draw there for Mize. Let's some cast his ordeal with Asa. Draw some cards. Hard to dislike that. There's the island. See if he just wants the cards. Yeah, that's exactly what it will be. Also gets, to also gets to trigger prowess and heroic here. So now he's going to crack that. Another counter. Peel in two. Yeah, if he managed to draw a god's willing here, yeah, that this, would be this gets huge. Ugly. That gets really good. 
don't believe that's the case, but don't have a great look at his hand. There's your block. It's an obvious one. See if he burns through a Defiant Strike. You will. Yep. Wants to get some more damage across. Draws favored Hoplite off it. So these two threats will trade here over Rose and Deathmist Raptor. A bunch of damage is going to come through. Mize is going to draw. Or excuse me, he's going to draw off Defiant Strike. Also going to gain some life. So. Yeah. I believe it's a total of five damage. Yeah. 23 to 7. Hawkins down to 7 here. And does have a copy of Collected Company in his hand. And they'll just pass. Yeah, I have nothing to do. Your turn. <laughs> I don't know if I believe that for a second <laughs> if I'm Logan. But it's interesting because Collected Company hasn't really made its way all the way to the standard yet. Like, you, as you said, the company decks are new. Yeah. So this might just feel like, oh, okay, he's got a removal spell. This is kind of annoying. Um, all right, I guess, you know, I'll do this, play accordingly, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, oh, no, just two huge threats. I mean, this company hits a Death Mist Raptor, for example. That's really good for Eric. Yeah. And we will spin the wheel here, see what he's going to get. Take a look at the top six. You get two. So you can find two. They cost three or less. That's one. That's two. And Protector and Anna Fenza, not too shabby. I wouldn't be unhappy with that. No, like, my, my bar is he got more than four power worth, four mana worth of creatures there, so yeah. that's better than most four drops you could have cast. Like, that's probably stronger than AC Drino. It's close. It's close. Which is a weird thing to say because we're talking about Siege Rhino, but it is close. The, the, I mean, the advantage is you have to build your deck in a certain way for this collector company to be strong, whereas Siege Rhino, you just have to cast Siege Rhino. <laughs> you don't have to do anything else to make it good. It's just, you, you just have to play Abzan, which has the best cards. So, Right. Here's the Fiend Strike. This okay. is going to make a trade happen. But that has really, while Eric is down to six, that's really turned around the tempo of this game. Because now Eric's on parity as far as how many cards are on the board. And he's one mana away from playing his own Den Protector and getting back Death Mist Raptor and, and, you know, getting this engine going. Battlewise Hoplite's going to join the party now. Let's see what Hawkins can draw this turn. He has Dramoka's command in hand, so we'll find out. Yeah, only one green mana up. means that he knows his removal should be pretty good right now. That said, Dem Protector is not a, really in a spot to beat up a Battlewise Hoplite. So yeah, look, you see some number of Dromoka's command. Does have another copy of Dem Protector. Has land number five. I believe has the Obzon charm as well. Yeah, his hand's actually pretty good. He's got a kill spell. Anywhere between one and... Three kill spells. And yeah. he, has a he has a Den Protector with a Death Mist, Death Mist in the yard. The big concern is that number next to his name. Yeah, not the 22. It's the big six. Yep. Uh, let's make that a five. Yep. It's okay. Five is more than zero. <laughs> it's four, four more than you need. Yeah, we're working our way down, though. And that Mana Confluence that's over there hanging out. Yeah, well, eventually that's just not going to be a land anymore. But maybe we could tap it <laughs> once or twice. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing my Urborg check. Okay, there is one. There is one in his deck. It's not in play yet, but there is one. There's Anafenza. Pain free is the way to be. He'll take one now. I like this line in that he's taking advantage of the fact that Logan only has a green up. Also, the best way to not get the surprise wins from Heroic is to just kill all their stuff the turn it comes into play. Don't let them untap with a creature, because that's how you lose. Yep. He's down to three now that Dramoka's command costs two life, but it, one of the ways to not worry about your life total is just to get this game over with. See, Dan Protector getting a counter off the Dramoka's command. It yep. was Anna Fenza that fought down the battle wise hop lane. Logan has drawn a lot of cards, but he, he's on the defensive right now. Now he has some life points to work with, so he can just take some hits as he builds up a board again which is what he's going to do. Yeah, favorite Hoplite and Battlewise Hoplite, so he is going to rebuild the board. Hawkins will untap and take a draw here. Picked up a Plains. Obson Charm, Den Protector, and a land in Eric's hand. At three life, he's got to be concerned. <laughs> yeah, that Mana Confluence is uh, its kind of scary, but the, drawing the land that turn, I say that card is less relevant as we go. And actually, having a Morph out there, that's a colorless creature around a card like God's Willing. 
or center Big. soul. And I think that's pretty important, too. This next turn from Logan feels like it's going to be the important one. Eric needs to survive through that. If he can get a chance to play Den Protector and unmorph it and get back a Death Mist and still be alive, I like his chances in this game. But that is a big, big this next turn of Logan's is a big one. Yeah. And if Fenza looks like it's coming on in, maybe. Maybe not. Well, it's probably safe to attack because you have your next Den Protector and you have a Death Mist in the yard. I actually like this attack more. Okay. Because Logan doesn't want to trade here. And you, Anna Fenza is a much better blocker than Den Protector. So if you want to just take some free damage to keep the, the pacing going, I, I like this. Here's a Morph. Leaving Obs on Charm in hand, then. It's actually pretty nice to actually have the mana to cast Obs on Charm or Unmorph Den Protector in this instance. Has a colorless creature to get around God's Willing. Mm -hmm. If he can regrow something off Den Protector, it's a very good spot for Eric. Banter up doesn't play Burn, it just has surprise combat tricks. There's an ordeal. Hero Trigger is good. Hero Hop Light's a 2 3 now. We'll see if on an attack, if Eric goes for this Opson Charm on the Hop Light, it's going to swing. Now it's a 3-4. Well, he has a free block here. Yeah, uh, free-ish. Right, he doesn't have to Obs on Charm now. He can block here. So yeah. Then if Logan goes for a trick, he can Obs on Charm response. Yeah, this is, yeah. yeah, so this is the block. Yeah. If he wants to Obs on Charm, he can just do that end step. Favorite hot place to follow, pass the turn back. Well, Mize, Mize with just one card in hand. Yeah, so it does. If he obs on charms now, then Hawkins can regrow the obs on charm next turn and have the mana to play it, which is, I think, why he's going to do it. He's going to obs on charm right now. He goes down to two. Yeah, oh. but he gets the ordeal off before it cracks. That's mm -hmm. big. And now the obs on charm's in the yard, and without using mana confluence, he can regrow and cast obs on charm. Uh, he would take one damage to do yeah, it. Yeah, he'd have to take one. It's use, okay, he still has one too many. He doesn't have to use Mana Confluence. I, I, that is true. <laughs> he has to use Lenmore Waste, yeah. so it's just as bad. He's definitely pulled ahead. The question is, can he get 20 damage across without Logan getting two? Yeah, I, I'm not sure about that. Deathmatch Raptor is going to come back. It's not impossible. It's just probably really hard. So I wonder if he'll get... Yeah, he can get back Tremoka's Command. If he really wanted to be greedy, he could get back Den Protector. Yeah, he's got to turn up the heat now. If possible, he needs to play... I mean, he can't play around God's Willing because... Not, not anymore. No, if he'd gotten back Den Protector and left it face down, <laughs> he could play around it. But now God's Willing is going to get him. And that may have been... That does give Logan an opening uh, here. Yeah, that's actually true. He could have He could have gotten back Deathmiss. So he, un he unmorphs Den Protector, gets back Deathmiss Raptor, and actually uses the mode that we seldomly see, which is return it face down. Yes, I think if you return Deathmiss face down, this play is actually more appealing, as strange as that sounds. So we're going to get a little fight here. You forget that you can do that with Death Mist Raptor. And we rarely see it happen. But the good news is that because of the creatures he has on the board, uh, Eric has a really fast clock, actually. I mean, this attack from Anna Fenza and Death and Den Protector, that's for nine. Logan will go down to 11. Eric's next swing should be lethal. Yep. But he does need to dodge a God's Willing now. I'm doing a centered soul check, too. Well, he's got to dodge Aqueous form as well. Three form, four gods willing. It's a lot of aqueous form, man. That is a lot of aqueous form. Normally you only see one of that. The draw, I believe, was Dromoka's command for Logan. That's an interesting draw. They might actually be able to buy him another turn. Well, he, he can, yeah, he, he can use it to... Put a counter, two counters on Hoplite, have it fight down the Death Mist, swing, then Eric will have to chump block with the Den Protector. So we'll get two guys off the board. Yeah, it's actually, that's actually pretty good. You don't get to keep the Hoplite. That's, he could do a lot worse. Yeah, he could start by attacking too, maybe. Well, yeah, I think if you want to do it, you'd attack first. Maybe Eric says no blocks. That seems really unlikely, but it's possible. <laughs> yeah, give him the chance to say no blocks. All right, there's the obvious block. Yep, that's, that's the correct block as well. 
if you have two creatures that are going to have to die this turn, you'd, you'd like it if one of them was named Death Mist Raptor. Yep. So Eric will force that. And that is the only creature he can fight down. So yeah, he gets both of Eric's untapped creatures. And Hawkins is one point short of, of killing Mize right now. He can attack for exactly 10. I don't know if he has any way to pump up the jam or not. Well, he has a collected company in hand. Um, Time to search. <laughs> right. <laughs> Nothing all that appealing to hit right now. No, I don't believe he can company into something that will win. So he's going to have to fade Aqueous Form and slash God's Willing for a second turn. Which he still odds on to do, but Hawkins has opened a small door for Logan to sneak through. God's Willing was always an out. Yep. Or no, sorry, rather, Aqueous Form was always an out. God's Willing, if he had a face-down card, would not be. And that's interesting from, from Hawkins, is he wants to, he's going to go ahead and swing, put Logan to one. I, so I believe what he's doing here is he's, uh, he's consuming that the Collecto Company will hit something. And by swinging with two creatures here, he's making sure that Logan's dead next turn and Logan can't go into a defensive mode and buy himself another draw. Sure. It's, I mean, it's risky. Yeah, I mean, you're risking that Company misses, which Hawkins' deck has... 24 hits for Collected Company. So it's going to, each card is 40% to hit. So looking at six cards, that's that's under 10% that he misses. All right. Here it comes. Yeah, <laughs> Logan crossing his fingers. All right, how we do? There well, we go, Elvis, here's some creatures. Yeah, the first three are all creatures. Yeah, Elvis Miss Six and Fleece Me Lions and all that jazz. Does Logan have a God's Willing here? That's the question. I don't think he does, and he is going to concede the game. It was a battle-wise hot play. That was his draw step. Eric Hawkins is going to win game number one here over Logan Mize. Obs on company up a game over Bantaroak, a close first game. Two to one. Jeez, yeah. That, I mean, at one point we asked, you know, can Hawkins deal 23 points of damage without taking two? And it, the answer was yes, but only by a sliver. Yeah, only by a sliver indeed. We'll take a look at the sideboards. Uh, we'll start with Logan since he'll be on the play here for game number two. I'll let you begin. Well, Logan has Logan's sideboard has a lot of cards that can come in, I think, against removal-heavy packages, which Hawkins really isn't. So, in theory, this should be a matchup that Logan wants to play. I mean, he's playing against a creature deck. Now, it's another aggro deck. We'll look at the kind of cards he has. He has Stratus Walk, Aqueous Form, Heliod's Pilgrim, um, two more Ordeal of Heliods. Because this is a racing, racing matchup to a point, I like Ordeal of Heliod. Um, Aqueous Form and Stratus Walk figure to be decent here, um, as well as Heliod's Pilgrim. But largely, Logan's going stick to stick to something close to his game one plan. Let's take a look here at Eric's sideboard. I like Eric's deck. Collective Company is a nice little card. Three Thought Seasons, a Glare of Heresy, a Master of the Unseen, two Self Inflicted Wound, two Ultimate Price, two Hornet Nest, Heroes Downfall, two Winged Rots, and an Elspeth Sun's Champion. He's got a lot of nice options. Yeah, I mean, Glare of Heresy is fantastic against the Banter Rogue deck. Most of the creatures they suit up are white. Um, Self Inflicted Wound, that seems pretty good here as well. I can't complain about that. Two copies of Hornet's Nest, one copy of Heroes Downfall. I'm on board for all of that. Two Ultimate Price. I mean, yeah, Hawkins is prepared for this matchup. I even want the thought seasons too. I think they're pretty good. They're, they're a little bit better on the play than on the draw, but I still think they're pretty good. Now, if you're going to sideboard in all of these spells, then I think that you probably have to sideboard out the collective companies. Which is tragic, because it's one of the coolest parts of the deck, and I think it's absolutely correct. Yeah. Well, we'll see how Eric does choose the sideboard. He'll be on the draw. Logan will be on the play. We'll very quickly talk about the next level library that's available at Star City Games. Not one, but two books by Patrick Chapin. For all school levels, paper book and ebook. Available now, everybody knows the innovator, and somehow he found some time to write like two gigantic books. Yeah, so this is this is from, you've had these for a, some of these for a while, the Next Level Deck Building, Next Level Magic. They're now available in paperback and ebook, as you mentioned, though. Uh, some theory from really one of Magic's foremost, foremost experts on theory for as long as the game's been around, recent Pro Tour champion. Uh, uh, Two-time world's runner-up competitor, Hall of Famer. Uh, there's not much we can say about Chapin that has already been said. He is fantastic and everything Magic related. Two books available at StarCityGames.com slash next level for more information as we get ready here for game number two between Hawkins and Mize, number seven, number 22. On our season two leaderboard, 
it's fun to watch the players on the leaderboard do battle. Haven't seen Logan for a little while. Really, the last time we saw him was at the first Open Series event in Columbus this year where he did make top eight with White Blue Heroic. And Eric, I mean, a new face to the crowd, a new face to me, but someone I assume you've known for a pretty long time. Yeah. Uh, has been around the Minnesota Magic scene for a long time. And this is cool, just to see someone who's just going to go for it and, you know, kind of see what happens. I mean, it's... I, I, there aren't words I can use to say how ludicrous a drive is for Minnesota Dallas. I, mean, I love it. I truly love it. It's spoken as though there are close drives for Minneapolis yeah, I to events. That's, I guess that's true. I guess that's true. Well, you know, and, and you, you know, you're right about that because everyone, a lot of people say, ah, well, you know, the Open Series doesn't come to the West Coast much. I mean, Joe has to fly. Well, it's not close for you guys either. I mean, you're right that Indianapolis is only 11 hours of driving. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. so this is longer than that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, St. Louis is like 13, yeah. but that's, that's true. about where it stops. And we, we only get to Minneapolis about once once every two years, I think, something like that. We yep. don't get to go with tons. So what you're saying is we need to have an SCG Fargo? Is that, that what you're saying? No one would, that would In the dead of out. winter in January? What do you I think? mean, that would be excellent. It's, it's far, I have driven to PTQs in Fargo in the middle of winter. That's, that's tough, man. Perfect. So SCG Fargo, we're going to get that scheduled for you guys in January, February of next year. And you it can looks do like Winnipeg, too. That would be, be fine. It'll be you and Patrick on that show. I'll have that weekend off. All right. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Let's, get, let's go ahead and get that booked. Let's go ahead and get that ready. Perfect. I hope, uh, I hope the, the powers that be at Star City Games are listening right now. I actually had my car break down on a trip to Fargo last winter. That was great. You had, yeah, it was like negative 30 out at the time. It was, it was rather scary. <laughs> Those are real numbers. You just, no, I, you just, <laughs> I'm aware, which is horrifying. How far away is Winnipeg from you? About six hours. Oh, that's actually, are there PTQs there and stuff? There used to be. Those were, yeah, there used, there used to be PTQs in Winnipeg. Hmm. I have played, I have top eighted a PTQ in Thunder Bay, Canada before. I don't know where that is. Right. That, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is the north, the north side of Lake Superior. How far away is that it's, from you? It's in Ontario. That's also just like about six hours. All right. All right. Wow, that's just cr Canada is closer for you than like going to India. Yeah, yeah, Thunder Bay is closer than Chicago. Wow, that's completely absurd. My goodness. My geography is pretty off, but that's that's insane. I got blown out the first time I drove there because I didn't realize that Thunder Bay is actually in Ontario. Okay. So, which the entirety of Ontario is on Eastern Time. Even okay. though it's like oh, almost no. due north of, oh, of Minneapolis. No. Yeah, yeah, you know how this story's gonna end, oh, right? Oh no. Well it's okay, you get a round one loss. But it's still okay. You can still win. You you can still win. No, we cr you crossed the border and the first thing I saw was a sign be like, you're now on the eastern time zone. I'm like, oh no. Yeah, Wait, that's, that's a big problem. That's <laughs> <laughs> drive faster. <laughs> Please drive drive. Faster. Well, I mean, it also looks like you're just really far away because you drive across the border, and the first thing you see is, like, Thunder Bay, and the number after it's, like, 105. I'm like, wait, hold on. And then you remember it's kilometers, and you're okay. Okay, but, okay, got it. But, got it. yeah. The Canada struggle. That is, that, I've never, uh, I've, been to, I've been to Toronto and Montreal. That's it. For Grand Prix. Yeah, those the, aren't anywhere near, near Mini. Yeah, those Minnesota. are super far those away. Are, yeah. yeah. Those are close to, those are close-ish to Cleveland. Drove to both of those. Eric takes a mulligan. He's going to take a look at six card. Logan kept his seven. It was actually a good showing, though. I think 55 players showed up to a PTQ in Thunder Bay. That's not bad. I mean, considering that the only places I can drive to it, it's seven hours from Minneapolis and seven hours from Winnipeg and, like, nine from Madison. Oof. Uh, I think it's, like, 12 from Sault Ste. Marie. If you know where that is. I've never heard of that That's either. also in Canada. Okay. All right. <laughs> that's, that, that's in another part of Ontario that doesn't have much around it. Okay. Um, Dan Lanthier made the trip from Ottawa to that. I think he drove up 14 or 15 hours. Uh, recent Grand Prix champion. I hope I hope he won that tournament. No, I, I, I knocked him out of the Swiss. Nice. I, he, I remember nice. He, said, he said... I... <laughs> it was... <laughs> We were both playing at one loss. He was like, really? And I was like, one of us is going to leave really upset from this PTQ. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's tough. <laughs> Eric and Amal get a five here. <laughs> well, I guess given that the, this, I think they said it was 20 hours. Eric, yeah, yeah. Eric this is farther. This okay. is farther. They're road warriors. But Eric's up a game right now, even though he's on five cards. We'll see what Logan put together. He'll start things off with a favorite hoplite off of Manic Influence. Scary start. Favorite hoplite on the play is terrifying to face down. That guy wears ordeals like no one else. It's an Elvish Mystic. And a pass. Might as well draw. He may have kept a one lander here. And he does have a forest. Okay. It's not so bad. 
to remote his command, get that Elvish Mystic off the table, especially when you're only going to five. Yeah. Oh, there's a chance that Hawkins kept a one lander. Wouldn't surprise me. But I do see a Manic Influence over there, so he's doing all right. That's an ultimate price. Now, one thing about Eric's deck is he does have like a lot of removal after sideboard, so this isn't so bad. Yeah, he actually managed to get the creature off the board. The question is whether or not Hawkins has anything to follow up with. I mean, he's on a five-card hand. He, he's trading one for one with Logan, which is dangerous, but he's on the draw. And to be fair, trading one for one with Heroic is usually pretty good because the card quality from Heroic is, is pretty low. Yeah. The though, synergy's high. Yeah, no, though, you know, Treasure Cruises can kind of undo that, but it doesn't look like, doesn't look like Logan has very many of those. He has two in his sideboard, and I'm not sure how many of them he brings in here. I mean, Hawkins is presenting like an aggro deck. That's not normally where you board in all the Treasure Cruises. Yeah, he, I mean, he played like an aggro deck game one. Yeah. An aggro deck that was able to stabilize and turn the corner, but it looked more like an on aggro deck that just happened to have Collective Company, which is kind of what he is, honestly. And Hawkins is playing a bit of his own brew. He said this is very, he said he based this off of the GP Paris deck. Okay. Um, but Sandy said the cyborg is really thrown at the wall right now. He, he wouldn't be surprised if it was eight or nine cards off. So, I mean, yeah, I wouldn't really expect my green-white aggro opponent to suddenly ulti be ultimate pricing my things. Um, there, there, he could be getting some surprise value out of this plan. Looks like Manic Influence is going to deal another point of damage here to Hawkins. And it's a Fleece Main Lion. Passing the turn back over to Mize, who will take a draw. Let's see what Logan can put together here for his fourth turn. Got a lot of options in hand as he shuffles it around. Mana, not as much of a problem anymore. Defiant Strike in hand. God's willing to. Logan's deck's doing what it's supposed to do here. Uh, his hand is, is pretty decent. I mean, he, I think it's an ordeal short of being good, but it's definitely passable. Yeah. I don't, I don't hate his hand, that's for sure. And such a dangerous spot for Hawkins on this block. He knows if he blocks that nothing, nothing good will come of it, but the question is if he wants to trade the card anyway. Yeah. I mean, best case scenario here is if you get to trade your face main line with a God's Willing, though. Logan does get the scry twice. I actually do like the block here and just make him have it. There's a God's Willing, so he will get the scry twice. One from the Rogue Trader, then one from the God's Willing. I think he's pausing to indicate that this is the Battlewise Hoplite trigger, mm -hmm. not the God's Willing one. Keeps it on top twice. Is there a follow-up? There is. Now there is a second God's Willing in Logan's hand, so while Hawkins did get the first one, I. You know, he, he still is trading his two-mana creature with Logan's one-mana trick. So he's getting behind on the board because he's doing that. And these are trades that Logan is certainly willing to make, given that Eric did mulligan to five. These are the trades his deck's designed to make. His deck's designed to play a creature and then trade one-mana tricks with lots of mana cards. There's Nana Fenza. Pass that turn back. Real big danger if Logan has an ordeal. It is so good well, right he now. He didn't have one initially, but he drew one. Right now, Battlewise Hoplite going to become a 5-5. Five, five. He'll get to scry. He'll get to draw two. That was a huge pickup for Logan. You forgot the prowess trigger. Oh, he prowesses yeah. the Seeker, which he's now <laughs> not going to attack with, probably. But it's got a Defiant Strike in hand and a God's Willing. Okay, mate, you're you are right. Get in there. Yeah, everybody in. I mean, the fact if you're if you're Hawkins, the fact that the Seeker is swinging is is horrible because you know what it means, but you don't have any plays. Yeah, you're, you're like, yeah, I'm going to trade this with a trick. That sure stinks. You're pretty stuck here. You hope he doesn't have anything, but if he didn't have anything, he wouldn't be attacking. No, he just has something. Yeah. You you hope you're trading with a real card and not ugh, like that. Yeah, Defiant Strike's going to target Battlewise Hoplite, which will allow Logan to scry. That also triggers Prowess, which means that Seeker the Way is a 4-4. Four, four. So there will be a trade. There will be some life gained. Now, because Logan has played it this way and went for the additional damage, what it does mean is that if Hawkins has a kill scroll, he can clean up the board. Yes. Because Logan doesn't have the gods willing up. Or well, he does. Now he does. Now he does. Okay. He had the land or he hit the land? Uh, th off the he, strike. He hit the, he hit the land off of the uh, ordeal. Okay. Yeah. So I guess if he's saying he's going to have an ordeal to crack and a defiant strike, it's reasonable to think that he'll hit a white land in three cards. Yeah, most likely. That plays more white lands than anything. A couple planes, eight fetch lands. Temple of Enlightenments, even though those enter the battlefield tapped, and of course, Manic Influence. Yeah, he has 14 untapped white sources. 
Hilliard's Pilgrim, Hilliard's Pilgrim, excuse me, the draw. Mai is kind of in the driver's seat right now. Maybe it's time for another ordeal. Yep. That'll allow a little scry action here. At this point, if I'm in Hawkins' spot, I just assume there's a God's willing. That ordeal play makes little to no sense without God's willing. Here's the swing, and game three is on about to begin. Yep, yeah, Logan is going to win game number two here against Eric Hawkins. Van Heroic and Abazan company all tied up. Hawkins did take a mulligan to five there. Hand did not really pan out all that well. Though him being on the draw, or excuse me, him being on the play for game number three will make a world of difference against the Heroic strategy, especially with all that two-man removal that he has. Yeah, I, he was on a five-card hand, and I think was able to trade early on. The turning point was really that ordeal of he, of Thassa from Logan. Not only did it force Hawkins into making some really poor trades, but the card advantage was too much. This part is going to go back to the drawing board, so we'll very quickly talk about the Star City Games IQ circuit. It certainly helped Logan qualify for the Players' Championship last year, and you get to get all of this sweet stuff as a result. Yeah, so... Yeah, with the Star City Games Invitational Qualifiers, we have, as you mentioned, a lot of exclusive prizes to our IQ circuit. Um, the playmats, playmats you see here, dice bags, the creature collection pins, a top eight pins for top eighting as well, as well as months of Star City Games premium content. Yeah, well, obviously, there are different types of IQs. We've got the super IQs, we've got normal IQs, elite ones, uh, premier ones that we have at Open Series events. They scale however you want them. So all you have to do is get in touch with your store owner, who can get in touch with Star City Games' organized play to run these things. And they have been very successful, thanks to you guys playing in them, of course. Couldn't do it without you. And as a result, you know, we've got the modern one and the legacy one tomorrow here in Dallas. I know a lot of people are going to be playing in. And then there's a Super IQ, heck, in Connecticut tomorrow that I know Ross, Merriam, Kevin Jones, Gerard Fabio are going to be playing in. So if you want to get these at your local store, get in touch with the store owner. They can get in touch with us. You can get cool stuff like this playmat, dice bag, creature collection pin, top eight pins, SCG premium vouchers as well. Star City Games for more information about it. As we get ready to see Eric Hawkins do battle here against Logan Mize in game number three. Don't expect to see the collected companies in his deck after sideboard. Just a lot of spot removal. Probably a pretty good clock. Going to play more like an Obs on Admiral deck. Yeah, well, not in the sideboard because they're bad in the matchup, but more, more because the card it would interfere with the cards he needs to sideboard in. Yeah, I mean, he's going to be sideboarding into a more spell-dense deck. Like, actual spells, not three mana creatures or less. So as a result, his collected companies will whiff more often. Yeah. And that's the thing is that you really have to be picky about your creature count with a card like Collected Company. As as you get much, if you as you start getting below 24 targets, I mean, I, I would say that's once you're below 24 targets for it, that's when I start just wanting to cut all of them. Yeah. I think you know, ideally, I'd be playing more than 24 in a deck. But and Eric has exactly 24. Yep. You know, all of his creatures are three or less, except for the two siege rhinos. It's weird to see an Obs on deck with only two Siege Rhinos. You, you might have to talk to him about I that. I mentioned that. <laughs> I said, that's, I said, you said it's really jarring to look at a deck list that starts with two Siege Rhino and not make a face. You might have to have a little conversation with your friend there. So what he said is uh, Obs on Charm, he believes, is better than Siege Rhino in this deck. And that much, that much I can understand. Okay. Um, in the fact that he does have a lot of four drop in Collected Company and Siege Rhino. Okay. Um, that said, two Siege Rhino is still really weird. He knows. He knows... It, he knows what Siege Rhino does, right? Yeah, I, I agree. Okay, I just want to make sure. that it's... Yeah. I just want... Look, he's 5-1. and one. I'm not. I agree. I'm, I'm with you. Saying if I could play five Siege Rhinos, I would. I do think it's an interesting take on the Green-White Company deck to add Obzon Charms to it, though. The card is very powerful in this strategy. Green-White could use a removal spell, and as far as removal spells go, one that also doubles as a combat trick seems really well positioned for what this deck's trying to do. Yeah, and I mean, it's just a great card, too. It's super versatile. It's interesting. We've seen it be really good. I have, I don't generally see players going into another color for it. You know, we don't see... Which, that's that's new territory here. Yeah, I mean, the Black Splash is very, very light here. It's two Rhinos and four Charms. And yeah. then I guess a large a large part of his sideboard actually is black. Yeah, Ultimate Price, Self-Inflicted Wound, hanging out with Thought Seizes, too. Even at Single Hero's Downfall. Hawkins will take a look at his opening hand. He looks pretty happy. He kept pretty quick. Maya's going to keep. We're underway here for game number three. It's a Temple of Mali to start. Top card going to go to the bottom. We'll head Maya's way. And yeah, as we saw game two, we didn't really get a chance to see Hawkins' entire sideboard plan, but we expect him to be on a much more controlling build here. There's a windswept teeth. 
Hawkins going to go down to 19. And there's the fleet spin line. So I expect to see a more controlling build. He can get a little aggressive to start. Sure. Play a fleet spin line. You play a creature, kill it, attack you for three, kill it, attack you for three. That kind of game. A little tempo-y. And you remember that some of his removal are things like Dramoka's command. He, the, these early creatures are still pivotal to the game plan. Maya's going to search for planes there with his windswept teeth. So both players were in need of a planes via Heaths. They have them. And we'll head back Maya's way for his second turn of the game. He'll take a draw. Pick up a copy of Aqueous for him again. Remember, Logan has three of those this weekend in his main deck. That's a card that you sometimes see in the sideboard as a one of. Well, I really like the Aqueous Forms in the main here. I don't know how many of them I want post-board if you suspect that Hawkins is on a removal-heavy plan. Let's see if Maya's going to play a creature on turn two. He's got a lot of blue cards in his hand. He has a Seeker of the way, too, but he's just going to pass the turn back. I've seen this before from Mize and Man, the two Florida natives. They'll typically play their creature on turn three with Heroic with the mana open to cast a God's Willing. Yeah, well, he, I mean, the creature's really important in his hand. At the same time, you know, he really needs to respect things like Dramoka's command. Now, where he starts to lose value is what's going on right here, and then Hawkins is just going to keep curving out with creatures. And unless Logan has something like an ordeal of Heliod, then he could just get far enough hand in the race that Hawkins will no longer have to answer Logan's creatures. There's Seeker Lay with the mana open. Well, that's good. It's not... That, the fact that it has lifelink will be pretty important here. Yeah, we're going to find out if there is a God's Willing hanging out over there or not. Because Hawkins is just going to keep coming. Well, I don't think Logan can make the block God's Willing play. He just loses to a kill spell if he does that. It's a little risky. Yeah, I, my guess is he's setting up for something like Aqueous Forming Seeker, gaining life, trying to hold up protect, protection for the Seeker of the way while maybe he's trying to get an ordeal going. Here comes Fleece Main Line. So Fleece Main Line by itself suggests that maybe Eric doesn't have the kill spell. Interesting. Yeah, it certainly is a, it's a hard attack to interpret, I think, from Logan's side. It certainly is a defensive posture from Hawkins, saying Death Mist Raptor is really the best blocker out here. Um, it, Barring something like Aqueous Farm, it'll block whatever Logan tries to assemble. You see Logan trying to figure out exactly what's going on. You can see the God's Willing in his hand. He has it. He's just supposed to figure out if he's supposed to use it right now. He also has a Johnny's presence, too. There's, it seems so unlikely that he can go for that block. He's just going to have to take three. And Logan, I think, a shrug and the same decision. Yeah, you, you saw the shrug. He says, All right, I'll take it. I'll take a draw step now. Now, will he go for something like an ordeal? It's, I like, I mean, this is actually pretty, a pretty interesting move from Eric. He's trying to overload Logan's God's Willing by having this Death Touch blocker. As it is, Aqua's form does help get around it. Part of the reason he's playing a bunch of this card this weekend. Looks like Hawkins does have a copy of Ob, both Obs on Charm and Ultimate Price in his hand. Hawkins going to sacrifice his windswept teeth. There's a forest. Let's see what's next here for Eric. He can go with the charm or he can go with the price here. Right, so, so he can play one of the two kill spells, and the God's Willing will protect it from that. So may, I, he could still set up that means that on the untap, he'll be able to use the other kill spell. By using the, however, by using the ultimate price here, he's actually not going to be able to obs and charm the Seeker on the mm -hmm. untap. A giant's presence is a nice job. It's going to force you some more damage. Trigger prowess, of course, which was already triggered from the Aquas form. So some lifelink action here. Yeah, it's going to be a 5-5 five, five this turn. It'll really swing the life totals back. Maya's deciding on the scry here still from Aquas form. Looks like he's happy enough. 
So light totals will swing, as you did mention. And now it's it's interesting because it, it feels like maybe Hawkins missed out some on some damage with Deathmiss Raptor. That's not technically true. Yeah, but. Aqueous Form was the one card that would do that. That's in it. You have to ask just how much does that damage matter? Yeah. Hawkins will draw. Mai is assuming no Bile Blights around here in this Obzon Company deck, and that is true. Zero copies in the 75 for Hawkins. There's an attack. So that'll keep the life totals close. But no main phase plays from Hawkins means Logan's to untap with all his mana again. Now two prowess creatures. That's a dangerous spot. Feels risky. Oh, well, I don't know if Hawkins has another line here. He may just that he may just have some lands and an Obzon Charm. Yeah. I mean, he can't cast Obzon Charm right now. Yeah, if he'd gone for Obzon Charm last turn, then he would have been able to price away the Aqueous Form Seeker. Oh, boy, another Aqueous Form. Yikes. Yeah, and if you look at Logan's remaining cards, they're in our deal of Thassa and a God's Willing. Maybe that's why, he, maybe that's why he's playing three of these. And it surely might be the best way to go for heroic decks against Deathmiss Raptor, and Deathmiss Raptor is so popular. Actually, starting to make a little sense now that I actually see it in action, of why he would play so many of this card. Well, this Hawkins will go for the Obzon Charm, but it's going to be a God's willing to save his creature. Mm -hmm. So that's three heroic triggers on each seeker plus the ordeal. This is going to be 11 damage. It's going to put Hawkins down to one. This is a horrible. Sp <laughs> this is a horrible position. And it's all lifelink. So yeah. Logan will go to 23. Yeah, this is. This is fascinating to me to watch. I, you know, Logan's going to resolve the scribe with the God's Willing. Now he's going to get the scribe bunch with these aqueous forms as well. He'll get a counter from Ordeal of Thassa so long as he does remember. But what's fascinating about this is, you know, when I originally saw the deck list and saw three copies of aqueous form, it seemed a little strange to me. It, it makes so much more sense now. Deathless yeah. Raptor is everywhere in this format, and it's a hard card for heroic decks to get through. And not so much anymore. So 23 and 1 now, the life totals. I don't even know what he can draw. He would need more than one kill spell. He's got knobs on charm in hand. That's going to kill that. Watch his, uh, he hasn't even looked at his other card. This is great. <laughs> yeah, that's Man, not going to do it. it. I believe it's Warden of the First Tree. Yep. Logan Mai is going to win this game and match against Eric Hawkins. Two games to one. Bant Heroic will take care of Abzan Company. Number seven on our season two leaderboard is up to six and one. And you see, even at the end there, Hawkins has a chance if he peels another kill spell to get back in that.